Hello, in this video I want to cover using Photoshop to make a height map and then using Mixer to bring in your height map to make a kind of custom material and then presenting it in Marmoset Toolbag. So we'll start off in Photoshop. And I just want to make a kind of um kind of swirly pattern type thing. Something like this. Right. It's a bit rough around the edges. I can use select modify and smooth uh, just to round off some of those edges a bigger value will round it off more ok and I can fill that in I'm just going to scale this down like so and maybe just rotate that round So you just fix up a few bits. I'm using the smoothing here to slow the brush down a little bit. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to put that in the middle of the picture here and I'm going to copy and paste it and if I go up to filter other offset and change this to half the document size you can see that it shifted that pattern to the edges here I can make another copy of this and move it here and up here If I merge all the layers and do offset again, you'll see that it's made this tileable pattern. Okay, so I can export that. Or save it. Save as. I'll just save it to the desktop for now. Okay, so once that's done, I'm going to go into Mixer. Metalness is fine and 2K is fine. So in order to bring that in, I'm going to create a paint layer and I'm going to choose displacement and load the image you'll see it's gave me some height there, I can increase the strength of that now in logical terms there's a lot of height to this but because I'm not using displacement you'll see that it just looks like a kind of normal map bump but as you can see when I switch on the displacement view you can see there's a lot of height to that now I can increase that um, detail here it's already at maximum I can also decrease it ok so I can change the strength of that here just to see it in that kind of height format now I can go ahead and bring in some new layers. So let's say I wanted this to be the base layer. Bring that in, say from below, so you can imagine it's coming from underneath and making its way upwards as it starts to make contact based on threshold radius. You see it starts to cover some of these other layers. Do wrap to base, that will keep it at a kind of plateau. Okay, I can go ahead and bring in another. Let's bring in this one. And this one I'll do from above. That way it's contacting this top layer first.
see the more threshold I give it, the closer you know, the closer it brings itself to that other layer. Okay, I'm just gonna go here and add a solid layer. Let's change that to black so that it matches the colours a bit better. It's already gave me a pattern, so I'm gonna just click this to see it as it tiles. And I can paint more detail here if I want to. Um, there's different brushes here if I want to add like an extra bump. I can go ahead and paint in white. So let me just check that. So that's the flow. Strength there. You see, I'm painting there, but it's actually painting down the way. I want to be painting in white. Maybe this is it. Ah, you can see this is the the tool that I want to paint upwards. And I can add some extra features there if I want. And this will all be tileable as well. So as it gets higher, it's more than likely to make contact with this texture. I'm going to tile that a couple of times. Let's just change the threshold a bit, like that, and I can make this one more glossy so you can see the difference. Okay, so now that I've got this, I can export now, as you see these maps, there's different ways to export your files and if you want to do a channel pack export, then that's what I'm going to show you. So, I'm going to call this Packed ARM, which I usually use for Unreal Engine. And that will be, in the red channel you put your ambient occlusion. In the green channel you put your roughness. And in the blue channel you put your metalness, right? So mix up this acronym ARM. That way you don't need to export AO itself. It's a grayscale texture. Displacement, if you need it, then you can maybe put that even in an alpha channel if you wanted. You'd have to change this to uh, RGBA so that it holds an alpha channel. So I'll go ahead and do that. Put displacement in there, just in case I need it. Roughness we don't need. Normal map is fine and albedo. Okay. I'm just going to choose where to export this to. So I'll just do a desktop now. Let's pick a folder. <coughs> and I can export it to 4K this time. That way I get more detail. I'm going to export these three maps. Now I'm going to head over to Marmoset tool bag and in here you'll see nothing much here apart from a default material. So I'm going to go up to this edit plugins generate primitives. I'm going to choose a plane add. If I choose the plane here and do control F, close that, uh, then it will focus on that plane. It's already got this default material by default and I'm just going to choose the textures now, so I'll go to this temp folder oops, I think that was one there we go. so there's the normal map now to see it tile, I'm just going to change the texture here, the tiling to 4 let's bring in the albedo Just choose a different sky here so we can see it a bit better. Let's do this one. There we go. It's looking more like it. So now I can bring in that channel pack texture. So I know that roughness is in the green channel here. So if I bring that in and change this channel to green, metalness, same texture. And in channel packing these textures, it saves memory. 
on your graphics card. It only has to load this texture one time and then you can you know, extract what you need in a shader. So this is the blue channel. So we've got roughness and we also need ambient occlusion. And that's in the red channel. That's already correct. You can see as I ramp this up to like 15, you'll see that it's included that I mean occlusion there. And that's really subtle, so I'll just bring it up to one. Okay, I've also got the choice of a cavity map. I've not really bothered with that. Uh, I'm going to add a displacement map. So I'll just do a height map and choose. Uh, the same one. In fact, don't think maybe it is in the alpha channel. It's hard to say. So let's just choose which. Um, that's a height map. Okay, vector. And the scale is really high or something. Okay, there we go. The vector displacement is different. It uses R, G, and B, so we just want this to be height. And it should start offsetting. Now, this is based on the mesh density as well. So let me just make another plane and see if I can get one with more. Yeah, so ideally, you want one with a lot of divisions in it and nothing's come out that way so let's just try a sphere and that looks more like it it's purely just to see the effect of displacement here okay it's not showing it too well let's just load in the initial uh, image that I used so that will be this one. And I guess that kind of acts as a height map for now. It's like grayscale based. Oh, that's actually a normal map, the looks of it. That's not the right one. <coughs> Let's just save this file to the same location. more like it. So you can increase the tessellation there to get more detail. It will lag a little bit. But that's now doing what it's supposed to. You can play around with the roughness value. Let's just play around with the light. So if you hold down shift and right mouse button drag move the light around. You can also tint the albedo if you wanted. You can also take that map out and then you know work with the metalness as just a solid value. Otherwise use what's in the map data. Can change the sky easy um, to see how it looks in different lights. You can see it's kind of working here. It does need more divisions, but there is a kind of limit to that, especially with this piece. So it initially needs a lot of subdivisions. So you can bring in your own subdivided plane, maybe something like 10 divisions by 10. And then that way you're not dependent on this tessellation so much like the way the sphere came in. It already had divisions on it. So it means I don't have to slide this up too much to get you know, that, that pushed out and looking more neat. Okay, so that's the basics to it. Now if you want to render this, you can go ahead and add some lights. So change that to like a point or an omni light. Increase the brightness. 
change the distance and the size and then control D will duplicate that you want to make sure ti your tiling is a whole number so that you don't get this kind of thing happening so if it's a whole number then you're seeing actually that's a tileable texture you can also add lights a different way if you click on your sky you can click anywhere here and increase the brightness of the child light or the brightness of the HDRI itself and that light actually gets childed to the sky so that light will rotate with the sky as I use shift and right uh, mouse click drag <coughs> and then if you want to render this off you can go to capture settings and you can change the settings here that's the HD resolution if you want more of a 4k resolution then you can choose that say ok and then either press F10 or F11 Use F10 so that we see the actual file opened. It does take a little while based on the size and it may come up not responding. If that happens, just wait. Okay, so now it's finished. Let's create this preview. You can zoom in and see a nice bit of detail there. If I want more effects, I can go to the main camera, play with the exposure, contrast, saturation, contrast center. There's also sharpening. Can add in some bloom. Not too much bloom tends to blur things, so you just want to use it a little bit. Vignette can be nice for presentation. And grain, maybe not so, it depends on what you're trying to present, but I usually take grain away. I want it to be a nice sharp image. Okay, I'm going to go up to um, render. I can enable ambient occlusion. Now, this is a screen based ambient occlusion. And if you've not seen that so well, you can increase the strength. You see it's very subtle down the bottom here. There's also global illumination. And what that will do is that will bounce some of the colours around each other based on this voxel size and you can say show voxels, now it's sampling these colours from the scene turning them into small cubes and then using that as a kind of localised uh, colour space if you like and it's able to incorporate that back in so you can see that kind of makes it kind of warm looking there's also shadows can change the resolution and if you want cascades uh, any local reflections if you've got a reflective surface and that's pretty much that okay so I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial on making patterns bring them into <coughs> mixer mixing in some layers and then present it all in Marmoset tool bag thanks for watching bye